All right, let's stay with developments on the continent now. World-renowned human rights lawyer Beatrice Mtetwa has been barred from representing jail journalist Hope Chinono by a court in Harare. Now, the state prosecutor uh, um, applied to have Mteta recused of alleged misconduct. Magistrate Ngoninduna said Mteta scandalized the courts by portraying Chinono's arrest as an abduction by state security agents. He accused her of being emotionally involved in the case because of letters that she wrote to the court and for details of the case posted on a Facebook account that was allegedly linked to her. Now, the magistrate is also calling on the Law Society of Zimbabwe to cancel her license to practice law. Uh, Beatrice Mteta addressed the media shortly after that ruling. Let's take a listen. It is a certain type of client we will be after you. It is not a coincidence that, uh, 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 you know, there is uh, an order that says I must be prosecuted. So clearly, uh, when uh, that order is coming from the court that will be hearing the case, uh, you know, there will be that chilling effect that young lawyers will be prosecuted for doing their work. And if you are young in your 30s, you cannot afford to be prosecuted. I'm over 50, so I, I, I mean, I can be prosecuted and I'm towards the end of my career. But the intention is to stop us defending a certain type of client. All right, so Love Mo Maduku is a professor of law at the University of Zimbabwe and says the fundamental right to choose one's legal representation has been violated by the courts itself. But the Prof joins us now from the Zimbabwean capital of Harare. Uh, Prof Maduku, thanks very much for your time and welcome to the AM report. My understanding is that Beatrice has been permanently barred from ever representing Hope Pearl Chinono. I mean, has something like this ever taken place before? Is there any legal basis for the magistrates to do this? Uh, first and foremost, uh, we cannot say that uh, she has been permanently barred. Uh, it's a, a ruling that relates to this particular application. We still do not know the extent to which the magistrate wants the order to go. But this is uh, largely extraordinary, very much unprecedented. And so one must say that it is a decision that uh, would have to be challenged in a higher court so urgently because these implications are very serious uh, to the rule of law and particularly to the right of an accused person to have a lawyer of their choice, which is quite a clear constitutional right and something that must be preserved in every democratic society. And what does this mean for Hopewell's representation in the interim? Um, in the interim, it simply means that uh, until that decision is set aside, Opal must find another lawyer uh, to continue with the application for bail, the application to for his liberty. And, and, and that is a basically practically what it means. Uh, the other way is for him to, to resist uh, and say he won't have the case continue until the issue relating to his lawyer is sorted out, meaning that uh, he might abandon his bail application, pursue the issue of uh, clearing his lawyer with a higher court and then coming back uh, to have the bail application. But I think that they are likely to take the first one, which is just to have another lawyer continue with the proceedings in the interim. And even though that option is available, much has to be said about this moment, right? So even if Beatrice did make disparaging remarks against the magistrates or the court, it certainly feels like this is a conflating of issues because it's got nothing to do with the merits of Hopewell's case. Uh, I think you are correct. What has to be completely um, uh, condemned and must be discouraged is a situation where they do not separate the two issues. When a person is an accused person and they are facing, as we see, uh, the question of their liberty, which is urgent and very important, it must be in extraordinary circumstances that you place in between that pursuit for liberty, um, you put in between the issue of the lawyer's conduct. Uh, given that this was in a magistrate court, and also given that this is a bail application, I think that uh, it was not appropriate for a court to consider the issue relating to the conduct of the lawyer, because that can always be dealt with separately and even agently as well, but after the matter relating to the accused person had been dealt with. So there is clearly no precedent for that, for that sort of intervention at a time that you are in. 
no precedent for the move itself, but I mean, have we had instances where Magistrate Nduna has responded in some way uh, to a legal representative? I mean, you know, is this a pattern of behavior, if you like, from this magistrate, or, you know, is this as much of an arbitrary move that it feels like it is, especially from people watching from the outside? I know this has not happened before. We have not had it in recent times. The last time this happened was uh, actually relating to a state prosecutor, where it was lawyers for the accused persons who were applying for a prosecutor to be recused on the basis that the prosecutor had become so conflicted, so um, completely out of line in terms of the independence expected of the state prosecutor. Not this way of actually recusing a lawyer for the defense. It was the other way around, and that's quite a long time ago. Mm. And if this move is upheld, Prof, you know, if the court is able to defend it even past the appeals, Take us through the legal consequences of something like this taking place. Well, uh, if clearly, of course, I believe that this would not survive um, beyond the High Court, but, uh, which is one point I need to make. But if one were to take it up and then the courts in the higher level say that is acceptable, then it would be a very dangerous precedent because we still do not know the proper basis upon which a court can make that decision at that lower level. Uh, it would have been something different if it had been a decision made by a higher court, like that jurisdiction being given to the high court. One would have some sense that perhaps a judge uh, may be able to balance the interest. Well, it's not an easy decision. You have on the one hand the interest of the accused person, and then you have on the other what you would call broadly the interest of justice, where a court need not be scandalized, where there must be proper administration of justice. But these are value judgments. It's not easy to be able to draw the line. And always, uh, whenever there are allegations going around, you may not be able to establish the fact. Like in this case, it is very unclear how the court came to the conclusion that uh, all the Facebook postings were in a way connected uh, with uh, a Beatrice Mteto. Right. And also to the extent to which this, um, these statements clearly undermine uh, the court. These are issues that could have been overlooked for a moment and then thoroughly investigated later. Mm. And I must say, it's probably very difficult to try and decode the uncertainty without contextualizing it in the current social political climate in Zimbabwe, isn't it? I mean, there's widespread allegations of human rights violations, a clear crackdown on dissent. This can't be removed from that greater context, can it? Uh, it's only unfortunate that it's taking place when there are those allegations. But with the legal systems, the, the making of wrong decisions or the making of incorrect decisions is a very common thing. It happens in every legal system. What happens is that when a, legal, uh, an, a, an, a judgment is made which uh, everyone finds is scandalous or everyone finds is quite extraordinary, the easiest way to deal with it is to go up uh, the legal rather go to the next court. Ordinarily, that ought to be sufficient. You cannot take out of a legal system people or judicial officers who may make uh, uh, wrong decisions or judicial officers who may actually get the law wrong. So on that basis, it might be too much to take this uh, case on its own and say that uh, it's really part and parcel of a serious pattern. It may be possible that the magistrate was acting uh, not according to the judicial dictate. But if you read the judgment uh, clearly, it seems less to be taken up and challenged in a higher court. But, I mean, Prof, do you really believe that this is a decision that's removed from the current political climate in Zimbabwe? I mean, can you confidently say that, given the string of rulings we've seen, especially to do with Hopewell, you know? Uh, we will not take it out of the political context. I'm not arguing that. I, I am accepting that uh, it's clearly part and parcel of uh, the difficulties we are facing with uh, the control by some politicians there over the, mid the, sorry, the judiciary and other arms of the state. It has always been uh, a difficult pattern at this lower level. Magistrates rarely exercise the sort of independence we would want to see in a, in a properly functioning democracy. 
So yes, um, the moment uh, this decision was made and the context in which it was made clearly raises problems with uh, the political uh, framework that seems to be controlling the court. All right, thanks very much for your time and your insights. Certainly appreciate it. We'll see how this all plays out in the days, possibly weeks to come. Professor Lovmo Maduku is a professor of law at the University of Zimbabwe. Thanks very much indeed for your time.